good morning. It's Saturday and I'm finally finding time and the energy to post an update. Um, fresh from the shower, no makeup, haven't done anything with my hair, and I've got a cup of tea with me to start out my day. So the past week uh, has, I guess, been eventful. I went back to work full time on Tuesday and not quite as exhausting as I anticipated, um, at least in terms of how I was after previous surgeries, but most of the time I would go back within a week, if not less than a week, and knowing that, you know, I was definitely going to be tired and it wasn't probably the best idea, but did it anyway. This time I was determined that I was going to take as much time as I felt I needed, so I had two weeks entirely off after surgery. And then I went back part-time, but working from home from t for two weeks. And then I started back full-time with being, um, it's a hybrid schedule. So I'm on campus some days, and some days I work from home right now. And I'll gradually be increasing my days on campus um, over the next few weeks. So, But then as I get into summer, I've got quite a bit of vacation that I'll be taking some a lot of four-day weekends. And so... Yeah, it'll be a little bit different once we get into that time, too. So, let's see. Yeah, back full-time. Um, also had my 50th birthday on Wednesday. And normally I would have taken the day off to do something fun and celebrate. But because I had just returned to work full-time after being on medical leave, I did not do that this year. And it, I probably... <laughs> It probably was not a bad decision because the weather was actually really not that great on Wednesday. It was kind of rainy. Temperatures dropped gradually over the day. And so not a pleasant day to be out really doing much of anything. So I'm not overly upset that I didn't get to celebrate um, in any way other than, you know, <laughs> my family calling me and singing to me and um, some lovely texts and some cards and things like that from people. So it was a quiet birthday. Uh, probably going to go out to eat this weekend at some point with my husband um, once he gets home. And that will be about it for my birthday celebration. Um, they're never much of anything anyway. So, and when it falls in the middle of a work week, it's, you know, really hard to do anything. So let's talk a little bit more um, about some things that I've been noticing since uh, since my surgery now. A month ago, actually over a month ago, we're going on five weeks now. Um, one of the things that I noticed, I think right away, and I've mentioned it in previous videos, is skin changes. And I'm now at a stage where my skin feels like either I'm getting used to how it feels or it's going back a little bit more towards normal. So I'm kind of happy about that. Although some of the really dry patches that I had don't seem to be getting dry again. So that's fine with me. I still have um, some dryness behind my ears, but I think some of that too is from wearing masks. Um, my workplace is still masks required. Uh, I don't tend to wear them as much out in public other places, but if I'm going to a doctor's office or anything like that, um, obviously around here at least, I still have to, I have to mask up. So that still causes some irritation behind my ears. That's causing some dry skin there. And I suspect as I have to wear masks less, um, that will clear up some too. All right. Uh, the big one that everybody asks about, about uh, pretty much at my surgeon's office, any doctor's office these days is bowel movements. <laughs> and, you know, they change. Um, I'm eating less food, so I'm going less. And um, I don't think I've really actually been um, constipated at all, which I'm really fortunate considering the amount of protein and um, that I'm trying to get in, but also being active, um, you know, walking, doing some sort of activity helps with that um, and trying to get enough water in. So food and eating, eating is weird. Uh, you know, I knew it was going to change. I mean, obviously, they rerouted my stomach. I have a small stomach pouch right now. Um, I think the hardest thing I'm struggling with at the moment is the feeling sometimes that food gets kind of stuck in the stomach opening. It's it's painful. It is a very uncomfortable feeling. And um, 
yeah, I'm just kind of dealing with how to make sure that I'm taking small enough bites, even though that doesn't seem to help all the time. Um, I find as I eat throughout the day, and I'm really only eating three meals, I don't have a lot of urge to snack um, between meals. So I get kind of get hungry at typical meal times, except for breakfast. And I've never really been a big person, a big breakfast eating eater. And so, you know, breakfast is just one of those things that I do because I know I need to eat breakfast to get going in the day. Um, and, but lunch, I tend to feel hungry probably about one o'clock is usually when I'm starting to feel hungry for lunch and then dinner, usually about five, somewhere between five and six. And so uh, I'm trying to listen to those cues to eat when I actually am hungry. And also being aware that I will be feeling hungry at those times. And so <clears throat> I'm supposed to stop drinking water or any liquids a half hour before I eat food. And so, you know, being aware that about 4.30, I probably should stop drinking anything so that I can, you know, go ahead and get ready to eat at 5 or 5.30 well, I sound like an old person eating dinner at five, <laughs> but I go with that. Um, and generally then throughout the rest of the evening, I don't feel hungry. Um, you know, I probably did a lot more mindless eating in the evenings or, you know, eating something to kind of self-soothe a little bit. Um, but I'm not really finding the urges to do that either. So, and I'm sure some of it's because, you know, eating is just really not as pleasurable as it was in the past. Um, that's not to say that, you know, I haven't been out to eat. Uh, I have taken myself out for lunch uh, a few times in probably in the past few weeks, but I'm only on soft foods still. So I've got about another week of that to go before I can go back to normal foods. So it does make ordering off a menu somewhat complicated because I have to find things that are going to be soft enough and that will also taste good. So that's kind of two different things. Um, I do have my little card where I can order off the children's menu, but the children's menu is generally full of things that have very little nutritional value, um, or are things that I'm really not supposed to be eating. I mean, mac and cheese, I was really supposed to be eating a lot of pasta. Um, even going forward, that's not going to be something that I will eat a lot of. Um, corn dogs, you know, it's a hot dog for at least the next um, well, five months, I should not be eating pork or beef because they digest slower. And so, you know, not to mention that hot dogs often have a lot of nitrates and other things in them that I really want to avoid. So, you know, chicken nuggets, breaded, um, same thing with corn dogs. So a lot of things on children's menus that are just not, they're not at all palatable and don't sound good at all and are not things that I should be eating. So, I will probably be bringing home a lot of foods and eating a lot of leftovers, and that's fine, um, you know, because my husband and I have different tastes, too. So if we go out to eat together, we don't always want to eat the same things, and, you know, so it's not always an idea that we could share um, a meal. So, and that's fine, but I'm not going to let the fact either that I can't eat a lot at a time keep me from going out and enjoying, you know, enjoying food. I do like to try new flavors and new tastes and new things. And I still intend to do that going forward, um, but still being aware too that there are certain things that I really need to focus on um, with eating. I have to make sure that really I'm really focusing on getting enough protein. Also making sure that my sugars and fats and those sorts of things are kept very low because my stomach will not be able to digest those well. And there is something called dumping syndrome that is apparently very painful. And I would like to, at all costs, if possible, avoid ever having that. So that's where I'm at with food and eating. Uh, trying to make my requirements for protein and water intake. And that is still somewhat a struggle um, because, you know, I just, I don't have the space for things. So I'm going to be switching to using more protein powder instead of trying to do protein shakes because I'm finding that I'm not tolerating the shakes well anymore for whatever reason. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at with all of that. So protein powder, I have uh, unflavored that can be added to pretty much anything. So I will be doing that. And then also focusing on 
Um, I have like a high protein oatmeal that I've been eating in the mornings and seem to be tolerating that well. And so looking for things like that uh, going forward so I can meet those protein goals because I do not want to stall very early <laughs> into this. Um, exercise and working out, really all I've been doing so far is going for walks, but this next week I am actually planning to get back to um, Planet Fitness, which is where I have a membership, um, to start at least for now using the recumbent bike, and then I hope within the next week or so to get back up on the elliptical, and once I'm cleared to um, be lifting more than 10 pounds at a time, I will start using the machines as well for resistance. So those actually seem to be working really well for me in the past, and uh, I hope that will help keep my weight loss going. Um, and it feels good um, to accomplish goals with that, to be able to add more weight, to increase my time on the elliptical, um, and feel like I'm actually getting out and moving and doing things. We've also looked into some water aerobics classes, and there is a place uh, connected with one of our hospitals, they have a health and fitness center, and they do offer water aerobics. Apparently, they have a warm therapeutic pool uh, where those classes happen, and I can I don't have to get a membership. I can just buy um, basically a punch card for sessions, and so I think I'm going to do that. The most complicated with thing is their classes are offered in the middle of the day, but I will take my lunch um, and kind of work my work day around the days that I've got classes because this is important. Um, you know, focusing on my health right now is one of my big things for the next year. And I am determined that I'm not going to get derailed by other people, other things, um, because, you know, I'm doing this for myself. This is really important. So that is exercise and working out. Um, as far as just kind of getting out of the house, I am doing a lot more things. I'm, you know, I've actually been to stores and been shopping. I've been out to eat. Um, just getting out there and doing a lot more. And it feels good to get out of the house. I'm starting to find that if I go a couple days where I haven't really left the house for any reason, um, whether it be work or running an errand or something like that, I'm getting a little bit more um, kind of cabin fever feeling. So even if I just go for a drive or I just run to the post office to mail something, um, I just need to, to get that time to be away from um, my home. And that's kind of a new feeling. Since the start of the pandemic, I've been perfectly content to sit at home and um, kind of stay in my own little, my own little bubble here and not uh, interact much with the outside world. But that is changing, and I'm glad to see that. Uh, I did go through a period of time several years ago when I was definitely agoraphobic and being out in public caused panic attacks and it was not pleasant. So I was a little concerned with the pandemic that I might be slipping back into that. Um, but it's good to find out that it's really not. It's still, my stamina is still pretty low, but as I start working out, that will increase. And so I know that I'll be able to do more things and not get so tired so easily. And, you know, a lot of that obviously has to do with my weight. And obviously, as I lose weight, I will feel like I can do more. And it just really kind of builds on each other. So I'm looking forward to doing some of those sorts of things. Um, I guess the other big thing that they mention <laughs> a lot, they always ask for ask about it at doctor's appointments or bowel movements. Um, I've had probably a little bit of constipation off and on. They've got Benefiber to help with that if I'm having problems. Um, but in general, I'm not. My bowel movements have changed, obviously, because I'm eating a lot less food. So I go less. And at first, it was a little worrisome. And then it occurred to me that, you know, obviously, I'm not putting as much in me. So there's not going to be as much to come out. Um, and, you know, once I kind of realized that, I was like, well, okay, I'll just go with it. You know, if I go for a week or so, I'm obviously going to be really concerned. But the, nothing like that's happening. So um, so that's the, the big one as far as <laughs> the question that I get um, at almost every doctor's appointment. Uh, one little bit of exciting thing, too, that happened this week was uh, when I had saw my pulmonologist last last week, um, they were recommending a home sleep study, and so I've been waiting to hear. Uh, they only have so many devices, 
And so there's a waiting list, but I got the call on Wednesday um, that a device was ready and I could come and pick it up. So I did that on Thursday afternoon, really kind of quick stop in their office. They explained how to actually, you know, hook it all up, had to sign a paper that if I didn't get back within the day, I was going to get, you know, fine, kind of <laughs> it's like a library book, return it on time. Um, and so Thursday night, uh, got myself all suited up with the device. It was really just a strap that had a little um, little box that did the actual recording for the test. Had to wear across my chest. Then I had a you know a cannula that I had to wear in my nose, and then a pulse ox thing that I wore on my finger for the night. And had to get at least five hours of sleep, which really generally is not a problem. I'm at least in bed for five hours if not more. And so I did make a point of getting myself to bed at a decent time on Thursday night. Did that. I don't know how well I actually slept throughout the night because I think I was paranoid that I would dislodge something and that would make the test not as accurate as it could be. So I kind of kept waking up to make sure that everything was all right. Um, but I think I wake up a lot anyway during the night, just kind of going by what my Fitbit tells me for my sleep. So who knows, it might have been normal for me to be wake up that much. It was just that I was more aware of being awake because I was checking, you know, is, is the thing in my nose, is the thing on my finger, is everything still tight across my chest? And then, so anyway, so wore that Thursday night, Friday morning, and brought it back into the office and dropped it back off. And hopefully sometime next week, I will hear about the results. And I guess if they're just really inconclusive, then they could schedule me for an in-office sleep study. Um, but if not, then hopefully I'll be getting a CPAP very soon. And I'm looking forward to that. I really am looking forward to having better sleep. Um, I spend a lot of my days being foggy because I, I don't sleep well. And I would like to get back to those times when I actually felt alert and kind of more with it than I do these days. So Kind of, that's an exciting thing for me. Um, so obviously, I returned to work full time. Not finding that as exhausting as I anticipated. Um, I am glad that I took a month to ease back into things. So I had the two weeks that I took off after surgery, and then I was um, part time work from home for two weeks, and then I'm I am now back in my office on a hybrid schedule. So I still have some days that I work from home, um, but some days then that I'm actually working in my office and I will gradually increase those days uh, over the, the next few weeks as well. Um, so I'll have, I'll probably for now at least always have one day that I'm working from home because it's just, it's a remote work day for everybody at my, my college. Um, but I will most likely at least be on campus three days, if not mostly four days a week. I wouldn't say we'll be there for the full four days, but uh, probably mornings um, and a couple, at least one of the days I would come home and work from home in the afternoons. I'm actually a lot more productive when I'm working from home on certain projects, but there's other things that are a little bit easier for me to do when I'm on campus. So I like the hybrid schedule quite a bit because it allows me really the best of both of those things. So I will post my measurements and my weight update um, before the end of this video, so look for that. And thanks for listening to me blather on about how things are going after surgery. I am really happy that I did it. Um, for those who naysayers out there who might say that the people who do weight loss surgery hate themselves, I did not do this because I hate myself. Um, I'm not that much of a masochist. <laughs> and Really, I did this because I do care about my future health and I want to have a full and active life for, you know, however long I have left to live, which hopefully will be at least another 30 years. And I want to get my body back to where it feels well and I feel like I can do more things. And I have a lot of plans for my summer. So this increasing healthiness, increasing my energy, increasing my Stamina are all incredibly important to me. Really, doing weight loss surgery was an act of self-love, if anything. So, no self-hate here <laughs> at all.
So I am not going to give recommendations on if people should do this or not, um, because that's something that you have to discuss with your bariatric surgeon or your primary care physician and really figure out for yourself if this is what you want to, if you, what you want to do. Um, if you can lose weight in a, any other way, I would definitely recommend it. This has not been easy by any means. My recovery, obviously, in the hospital was, was difficult. Um, you know, and every person is different. A lot of people have it a lot easier. Other people have a lot more problems with it. But you're doing something major to your body that is going to be with you for the rest of your life. So you really need to consider those things. And like I said, for me, this was the best decision that I can make at this point um, to jumpstart weight loss and get me on the right track where I needed to be finally. Um, but other people are going to find different things. And that is an entirely personal, individual decision that you have to make for yourself. So I won't advocate for or against. So that's all I have to say for today. I'm going to probably move these updates to Saturdays or Sundays, depending on what I'm doing for the weekends. From now on, it's getting a little bit more complicated as I'm back to work to get things up during the week. So look for that. I'll get you another update next Saturday, uh, including my, I will be sharing my measurements and my weight each week and whatever kind of comes to my thoughts about all of this post-surgery life that I'm living now. So bye. Have a good one. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please consider liking and subscribing.